Good morning, everybody. This is Charles Barnett, and I have some spiritual nuggets to share with you this morning. Romans, it's a book in the New Testament, Romans chapter 12, verses 6. The Apostle Paul is talking about spiritual gifts. He's starting to lead into spiritual gifts. And he says that being a part of the body of Christ, we all have spiritual gifts that are given to us by the grace of God. And he says, since we have these gifts, let us use them. There's no sense in having gifts from God, especially spiritual gifts, and not to use them. There's no point in having a gift and keeping it to yourself or being in a religious circle that stifles that gift. That is against God, that's out of the will of God. When God gives you a gift, you're supposed to use it. You know, we don't want to be like that guy who buried his talent because he was afraid. It was, it, the end result for him was not good. So he says, and then the first gift he mentions, he says, if it's prophecy, then prophesy. And prophesy according to the measure and the portion of faith that God has given to you. It's in Romans chapter 12, verse 6. And as I was thinking about that, you know, I, I was ruminating on that, how many people who don't really understand prophecy, they don't know, they don't even look up the Greek word for that word prophecy. It's foretelling. In other words, speaking what's in the future that hasn't appeared yet, that hasn't happened yet. And a lot of people just change that word prophecy to preaching. Because they know what preaching is. Most of them don't really know what prophecy is. But that scripture is not talking about preaching. It's talking about the gifts of the Spirit prophesying. Thus saith the Lord. Like one of those. That's what it's talking about. In other words, people that are prophetic. And he mentions it first because it's one of the most important gifts. Because it is the gift that has a catalyst of faith within itself and then the Lord told me this he says the reason prophecy is first is because it is what is in my divine order God's divine order starts with prophecy whenever the Spirit of the Lord moves upon something he's moving toward that like the the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep the next thing that happens as he's moving towards something is he speaks a word. Let there be. Let there be. And there was. Let there be such and such. And such and such came to pass and took material uh, being. So in God's divine order, prophecy is always first. Because God speaks it and then it happens. Right? Isn't that what the scriptures say? Hallelujah. So, prophecy is very, very, very important. Those of us that have the gift of prophecy, some of us were just full of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we may not have the gift of prophecy, but because we're so close to Jesus, we'll occasionally prophesy. <clears throat> and because the spirit, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's why if you're baptized in Jesus' name of full of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, and you have a good prayer life, and you love to reach people for Jesus, and you're active in relaying the gospel message, you will slip into the realm of prophecy. It is available to every one of God's children. Amen. You have the Holy Spirit. He'll pour His Spirit upon all flesh 
and he says, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men and your young men dream dreams, have visions. That's prophetic ministry. But if you have the gift of prophecy, you're going to prophesy frequently. You should prophesy consistently. That should be people who are saying that's that person's gift. If you are an apostle or a prophet or a prophetess, doesn't matter if male or female, it all matters of what God decides to give. If you have those uh, anointings, those uh, ministry gifts that are in the fivefold ministry, you will prophesy. One of the main gifts that that office and those uh, giftings of apostle and prophet is they prophesy. The apostle is a little bit more of the foundation and really works to getting all the ministries to work together and build them up. Whereas the prophet just loves to go and prophesy. They're constantly, that's their gift. And a lot of times they'll travel from place to place. But it is the first thing the apostle Paul mentions because it's the first thing in God's divine order. Now I know a lot of people like to say, well, all the gifts are the same. They all have the same importance. None is better than the other. None is higher than the other. And though that sounds noble and that sounds good, it's not true. It isn't. It's not true. Um, just as many Christian circles, they idolize preaching and teaching and teaching is good we need it I mean I can teach um, I can preach and I prophesy I can do all three and God has blessed me to do all three very well I can do it pretty good without the anointing unfortunately but when I'm anointed it's a whole different story and that's another lesson for us in the books later on that a lot of times we become carnal and we cruise, put on cruise control. And we should be seeking and, and going deeper and, and you know, getting a fresh anointing. But, um, yeah, the, in God's divine order, it even says, it, the Apostle Paul mentions it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talking about the gifts, gifts of the Spirit, and he mentions it. In verse 28 and he talks about the body of Christ again and he says now these gifts apostles are placed first prophets second and third teachers that's how important it is that in two separate books he mentions the prophetic anointings as first and foremost because God moves upon something then he speaks. And when he speaks, it's a thus saith the Lord. It's a prophetic word. It's a rima. It's a word that comes with dunamai. Explosive force. Woo! Hallelujah. Then after that comes the teaching gifts. Then everything else falls into place after that. So, I know a lot of people are so used to preaching and teaching and, and uh, they just, they love somebody who can teach and break things down. And then they love the hooping and hollering, exuberant, excited, full of fire preacher that can make people jump, shout, run, fall on their face and cry. And that's awesome. And, and it's really good and it's needed. But that's not prophecy. It's not. A lot of people don't realize that that type of exuberant, hardcore preaching is just basically dynamic teaching it really is it's just some people are a lot better at relaying it uh, and uh, they know how to bring across the word and make it powerful or make it deep and then there are people who just stick with the simplicity which is good we need all of it but that's preaching and teaching and we're so used to teachers that we uh, rarely realize or understand the necessity of prophecy. So 
I remember I could go to a preaching conference and I could tell you who was a good preacher slash teacher and who was just a teacher. And then there was that certain person that got up and they start to preach and then they slipped into prophecy. And I would say, oh, there's the gift of prophecy. And it's crazy because most of the people didn't even know that that was prophecy. And sometimes the speaker didn't know it either because they're so hung up on what's third in the body of Christ when they should be really embracing apostles and prophets and the gift of prophecy. Because if you want to be with the move of God, you want to be right with God, you want to be right in the forefront of where the Spirit of God is moving and what God is doing right now, then you need prophetic ministry because that's how God uses and works. Is whenever He moves on something, He then prophesies, as thus saith the Lord. Remember, that's God's divine order. He moves and then He prophesies. Then everything else falls into place after that. So, I've had preachers tell me, and even pastors and bishops, who literally believe, because of their ignorance, that, well, yeah, in the book of Acts in the New Testament, the church was just getting started off, so they needed apostles and prophets, but now that the church is established and we have bishops and elders and pastors, um, yeah, we don't need them. You know, we have good teaching gifts and stuff like that, so we got it under control. That's basically what they're saying. We got it under control. We no longer need apostolic prophetic ministry. We don't need apostles. We don't need prophets. Well, geez, we haven't had them for 200 years. We're doing good. We don't need them. Yeah, and that's why the church has been so messed up. And I don't want to get into that because I can list all kinds of gross, ironious sins and things that leadership and whatever has committed over the past couple hundred years that have really done damage. And a lot of it is simply because we refuse the revelatory gifts that God is speaking through. And therefore, <clears throat> we become misguided. We start listening to people who have a lying spirit. Unfortunately, I preached a message on that. I taught a lesson on that before. That was a deep revelation from the Lord. You know, and uh, and then they're misguided and they start, you know, getting their guidance from the secular world, the corporate world and the unsaved religious world. And then they get all screwed up. And before you know it, they're, they're now they're fighting against. They don't even tolerate no more those who prophesy. Now they're fighting against them and conspiring to somehow get rid of them and stifle them. And I'm a witness of it. But I just wanted to tell you that, that that scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, the Lord dropped that nugget on me and said, the reason why prophecy is always first is because it's in God's divine order, starting all the way from the beginning, in the book of Genesis, all the way through. And the end, the last book, is one big prophecy. So it's extremely important. You need apostles and prophets in your life. You're not, you're not coming to complete fruition with just teachers, you're not. Read Ephesians chapter four, verse 11 and on, and you'll see that. It says in those scriptures, you need apostles and prophets to come to the full uh, stature and maturity in Christ. You need prophecy. You need people that prophesy. Because the Apostle Paul told Timothy, who was a young apostle, he said, don't forget the prophecies I made over you. He goes, concerning your ministry. He goes, by them you wage good warfare. Prophecy is your orders from the general of the army, Jesus Christ, to do spiritual battle, spiritual warfare. So... You need prophecy. 
if you don't have prophecy, if you don't have people, prophetic people around you, you are seriously half blinded with uh, one eye that's dim of sight and you really don't know where you're going. And you're gonna get stuck in an agenda and become a slave of man and be influenced by the devil. And you guys are gonna just get so caught up in humanistic things that you're not gonna be able to realize the spiritual when it's right in your face because you're so ignorant and dull of hearing to a prophecy. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit <coughs> is saying to the church, the body of Christ. Let your eyes be open that you can see what the prophetic messengers can see. Like Elijah, when he said to the Lord, Lord, open up the eyes of your servant that he may see. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's prophecy. 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 You need it. You got to have it. You are incomplete without it. Hallelujah. It's first in God's divine order. God moves and then he prophesies. A thus saith the Lord. So this is Charles Barnett. I just wanted to drop that heavy duty nugget on you. Um, it needs to provoke you. Uh, you need to really look into it. Um, if you've ever known prophetic messengers and as soon as God moves them somewhere else and they leave and that ministry is no longer available to you, you will notice the void. And it's irreplaceable got to have prophetic ministry because it is the ultimate gift in guidance and direction to move and flow in the current right now spirit of God what God is doing now to be a part of it now you need prophecy in Jesus name God bless you this is Charles Barnett Charles Barnett Apostolic Galleries Network Despise not prophesying and don't quench the spirit. God is still on the throne. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen.